Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unprepared. Uh, my name is Chase, um, and I'm doing this completely insanely today, but that's fine. Welcome to the show, Krista. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you, Chase. That would be probably the worst intro I've had. So let's just run it back <laughs> real quick. Uh, Krista, is we've been friends for a long time, and she helps small businesses with SEO. So we're going to kind of dive into that today. Uh, so how would you like kind of where would you like to take the conversation? Yeah, um, I would love to talk mainly about some mindset shifts that I think a lot of smaller businesses should be making about the role of their website and also some like resolving some SEO confusion and myths that people tend to have. Let's do it. And I, I probably have those confusions myself. I say it all the time. I'm not really an SEO person. I understand the concepts and it can point you in the right direction. Uh, but that's not that's not me. So I would love to let's let's get educated. Okay, sounds good. So if I want to just jump in here and talk about the biggest mindset shift that I think a lot of people, especially people who have in 2020 just launched an e-commerce store out of necessity, like maybe they've pivoted from a brick and mortar store or they've, you know, got a lot of their main sales channel with some sort of like in-person like market type sale. Um, and they decided to launch an e-commerce store to um, win back some of the, the losses that they've had. Um, a lot of people tend to think of building an e-commerce website kind of like you would build a brick and mortar store. So their goals are to make it feel welcoming and to have it look aesthetically pleasing and then just to have their products like up on little shelves where people would come and browse. So they just sort of present their products on their website. Um, and the mindset shift I want people to make is that on as an e-commerce business, your website is not just about presenting your products. And it's not really about creating a welcoming space. And it's not even really about the aesthetics. It's about selling your products and establishing your brand um, and overcoming these major hesitations that people might have that they wouldn't have in person. Um, so if you think of the online shopping experience of a consumer versus their experience in person, there are a couple of major differences, right? Um, the biggest one probably is that it's a lot easier to change brands. It's just hitting a backspace arrow or like scrolling farther down on Instagram or wherever you're buying the product versus in person. If you're driving to someone's store, you're at their booth, like you're, you're almost fully committed at that point because you have to oh, yeah. physically go away to like change brands. Like something major has to happen. The intent is a lot higher in person for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then another major difference is that trust is a lot lower, um, especially for new customers because they aren't seeing someone face to face. There's a little bit of wariness about putting in credit card information for a brand that maybe they're not sure about or they can't feel the product in their hands, so they're not sure um, if it's the right one for them. Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna smell weird? Uh, so all of those things have to be overcome on your website. So that is where making this mindset shift and switching your brain from my website is just to present stuff kind of like an online, kind of like an in-person store would to my website is here to really take people by the hand, kind of like a sales associate would and guide them through your store um, to get them to take the action that you want them to take. And they probably want to take too, which is to, to buy from you and feel really good about that. Yeah, I think it comes down to oftentimes, uh, there isn't, you know, the education piece that goes along with it, you know, especially now, like it, it's a great thing about the marketing that you know Shopify or Squarespace or any of these other platforms that put out there. Like it's so easy to get your products online. That is true. Yeah, it is difficult to sell them online. Uh, you know, starting a new store. While while yes, you can kind of DIY it yourself and get it done. If you're not thinking about all these sorts of uh, just weird questions that your customer might have. It's you know, oftentimes the first question I have for a prospect when they reach out to the agency, it's like, all right, cool, we make this beautiful, awesome website. Like, how are you going to get traffic there? And it's like they haven't considered that ever. They're like, oh, I just thought like you put it online, it's going to work. It's like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah, I completely agree. I think there is a bit of a like, just build it, and people are going to somehow show up and and magically become customers. But there is a lot more strategy to it, even at that endpoint of your website. Yeah, it's 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 very funny that people think that a new website is going to solve underlying problems. Uh, you know, even if you, it, it it could be something as simple as like you're just not educating the customer enough about the product because, like you said, it, it lacks the physicality of it. Like if I'm at a booth at a trade show, uh, you know, checking out this widget, you know what I mean? I can hold it, I can smell it, I can lick it if I want. Who cares? 
Um, but I can't do that with an online store. So I'm going to have like all these millions of questions about the product. And oftentimes, that is that is vastly overlooked. And product pages are, you know, if you only have like one image on your product page and like some sparse, maybe sensor sensor to copy. If you have gotten a sale from that, like you should be counting your lucky stars because like that is not enough information at all. Um, you know, you need to have a uh, video about the product. You need to have lifestyle photos. You need to have close ups. Like he- now, you can you can start doing augmented reality stuff with Shopify, which is like insane. But people love that. Like if you're selling furniture and you're not exploring how to at least get your most popular products set up for augmented reality, like you're like leaving so much on the table. But that's like that was a big tangent. Let's kind of run it back to SEO now uh, after my whole rant about content. Yeah, well, no, you're so right. I mean, that's another big misconception that people have, which is that I get a lot of so I get a lot of people coming to me asking if I can write like their product descriptions. And it's it's always important to realize that like a product page cannot just be an image and you're in like a little description of your product unless everybody is highly qualified who's visiting that page. Like they've been through an extensive funnel and they're already educated at that point. Um, I think the best product pages are really designed like full web pages and they have, you know, like there's scrolling capabilities. There are lots of different sections, as you said, videos, multiple photos, um, just a lot of education. Yeah. Yeah. And all that education kind of comes back to helping you with SEO if you actually do it the right way. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. Once you get all that information in, in there, you know Google's gonna crawl it. All those, all those, you know, websites are gonna crawl. It. And not only are they gonna crawl that information, is is when when you have a long form product page and you have uh, more content on there, people are interacting with it. Like heck, you add like a minute long video to it, right? And people are watching this video. What Google's gonna see is wow, people are on this page a lot longer than they're on these other pages. That must mean that this is high quality content and that like gives Google a trust signal that actually helps you rank higher. Yeah, that is very important. Um, because one thing that smaller brands or or new brands or new e-commerce stores, even if you're an established brand but recently moved to e-commerce, is like overcoming a super low domain authority. Um, And for those of you who don't know, domain authority is just like the score Google gives your website based on how authoritative and trustworthy it thinks it is, right? And if you're new or new to online, like it's, you start off, I think at zero or one. So it's going to be, it's going to be low and hard to then rank on Google, but doing something what Chase said, just using these tricks to convince Google that your website is trustworthy and people want this content can go a long way to boosting that domain authority um, without, you know, having to be around for five years. Oh, absolutely. So, hey, like, so if someone is interested in learning more about SEO and potentially like what you can help them with, because straight up, I don't, we don't do SEO and I don't want to help you. I can give you some <laughs> great advice, but you know, it's just not, it's not something that we offer. Uh, so if someone's interested in learning more about working with you and, and about, you know, improving the SEO on their site, like what should they do? How should they get a hold of you? Yeah, um, you can get a hold of me via my website. It's kristawalshcopywriter.com. Um, I'm also pretty active on Instagram at kristawalshcopywriter. Uh, those are two of probably the best places to find me. Cool. I'll make sure we'll link to that stuff in the show notes and all that. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah.